Many new founders struggle with selling their first deal. It usually takes them three or four months to close something. I know because I advise 50 to 100 founders every year and many of them wonder if they should quit their business before they even start. I want to help you avoid the frustration and discouragement that you'll inevitably feel if you're not making sales for your new business. So in this video, I will show you what it takes to close your first few deals and share with you the number one mistake many new business owners make when selling their service. And instead of setting arbitrary sales targets, I will share with you what your sales goal should be at this stage. After I was laid off as a VP from a cutting edge tech startup, I started my first business selling web design services. I had no background in sales. I made the same mistakes I now see other founders fall into repeatedly. It put me back months. Had I known what I will share with you today, I probably could have closed my first sales in just a few weeks. As a side note, this video is not about marketing and getting leads. Rather, we will cover what you need to do once you have your first leads. These are sales and pricing principles new founders usually take years to learn on their own. Many new founders I speak with complain that no one is buying, but all they're doing is waiting by the sidelines. These founders think that clients fall from the sky. It's been getting worse. In this time of instant gratification, some founders think they can ask ChatGPT to spit out a sales page for their website and the sales will come flooding in. They don't realize with AI or without how much work closing the first deal takes or how much they need to pursue prospects. Later on, when you are more established and more importantly, when you've established a reputation for delighting your customers, clients will pursue you, but for now, you need to pursue them. Fresh business owners usually have a specific image of who they want to work with and what they want to work on but that ideal project might be months or years away. This is not the time to be picky with your leads, even if you don't like how they dress. Just working and moving, even if the circumstances aren't ideal, is better than sitting at home waiting for the perfect client. If you find a lead who seems open to buying, but say, requires you to visit their offices once a week, or wants you to send daily updates, or whatever unreasonable expectation they may have, endure it and close the deal. New founders realize in hindsight that the leads they were speaking with two months ago could have been paying clients. Don't find yourself in this kind of regret. Instead, close the deal. One of our very first web design clients wasn't ideal. They were demanding and aggressive negotiators. It seemed like we were walking into trouble, but we were desperate, so I closed the deal with them anyway. They made us do tens of iterations on something that should have been capped at two iterations. Even after we did everything for them, they took months to pay us and I had to call them and visit them many times to collect the money. It was a nightmare. But little did I know, this client later on brought us three new clients, one of whom was a very established business that I sold a $6,000 project to, which was three times higher than our normal rate back then. Through that same difficult client, we also got connected to a big network of businesses. Our patience and perseverance had paid off. The lesson here though, isn't just about being open, but also to go above and beyond for your very first clients. The references and testimonials that they can provide at this early stage will be critical to your survival. Although you should strive to delight your customers at all times, when starting out, you're too vulnerable to afford any kind of client dissatisfaction. So try to especially impress your first few clients. If that means staying up late, putting up with some attitude, or doing things you normally wouldn't do, that's okay, do it. This is how your first clients can help you get your next clients. This is what it takes to get your business off the ground. You have to do unscalable things early on to get to a place where you can scale your business. The third piece of advice I have for you is to put in the same amount of effort into pursuing the lead two months into the sales cycle as the day the lead comes in. Many founders start to lose steam after a few weeks of not closing the deal. As a founder, 
like it or not, you are your business's number one salesperson. You must keep up your enthusiasm to close the deal at all times. Trust me, leads can sense your energy. At times, founders come to me panicking over not closing anything after eight or 10 or 12 weeks of trying to sell. Sometimes the sales cycle is long because the founder isn't taking the right approach. But other times when I examine their business, I immediately see that a quick sale with their type of service is not possible. They don't realize that a more complex or expensive offering typically requires a longer sales cycle. You can't sell a supply chain audit contract to a government agency or a large enterprise with all the AI bells and whistles at the same speed as a simple service agreement for a local nonprofit. When the investment and the risks are large, the purchase decision usually involves multiple people and additional deliberation. Find out how long the typical sales cycle for your industry is. This point is not to be misunderstood as abandoning a healthy sense of urgency. You should always stay engaged and responsive through all stages of the sales funnel and work to close deals as quickly as possible, but just don't expect an unreasonably quick sale. Now, before we get into the number one mistake many founders fall into, let me tell you what I think your early stage sales goals should be. Instead of trying to hit big sales targets, you should be fully focused on one, getting a few logos, meaning a few client logos that you can include on your website and in your marketing materials. Two, getting testimonials like he walks on water. Three, writing case studies about projects you've worked on and problems you have solved. And of course, four, getting referrals. Your aim should be to build a client base and then work your way up to adding bigger logos. As you get bigger logos, they become your new baseline and you can continue adding other bigger ones and you'll naturally get stronger testimonials, better referrals, more interesting case studies, and most importantly, more lucrative contracts. Let's now talk about the number one mistake founders make when trying to close their first deal. To start, many new business owners underestimate how difficult it is to sell something no matter what it is. Your goal with your very first few clients shouldn't be to make bank, but rather to just close a deal. Your number one concern at this stage should be to just sell, no matter the price. So the biggest mistake I see many new business owners make is worrying too much about pricing. Some spend months thinking, researching, benchmarking, and packaging their service without going out and selling. Then when they actually go and sell, they're shocked at how off the mark they are. I'm not saying pricing doesn't matter or you shouldn't do your due diligence. I merely want to emphasize that when starting, pricing is not where your focus needs to be. I guarantee you, if you can avoid stressing about pricing today and you just put something together then head out to sell, you'll cut the time to your first sale in half. I think the stress over pricing comes from a major misconception. Many new business owners think that price is a flat rate or that every client pays the same amount to a consultant or service provider. But that's not true at all. The beauty of selling services as opposed to products is in your ability to charge different clients different prices for the same service. While you might have an established hourly rate or service fee, you don't have to apply them equally to every lead that comes your way. You can change your prices based on how valuable the service is to the lead, how desperately you need a client, or how the market is doing, among other factors. For example, Enor, one of my previous businesses, became a certified consultancy and reseller for Google Analytics, one of the leading products for Google. As a reseller, you buy a license for X and you sell it for Y. The difference between X and Y is your margin. We quickly started feeling the pressure from Google to sell, but the sales were not coming. We decided to take a different approach. We had the opportunity to pitch Accenture and we knew we were competing against other agencies. Our margin on reselling Google Analytics should have been $75,000. Instead, we decided to bid only $20,000 above cost. So we sacrificed $55,000, but we got the deal. Accenture went on to become a long-term client 
generating $1.5 million in revenue for us over several years, and they were still with us when I sold the business in 2019. The land and expand approach certainly worked for us in this case. Just as importantly, this client helped us establish the credibility to get other, even bigger clients. And we stopped competing on price and began competing on the demonstrated excellence and value that we had already provided to other clients. The bottom line is, early on, don't stress pricing, just close deals. Now, no sales job is complete without a good pitch. Watch this video here to learn when it makes sense to sell for free to get your business off the ground. See you next time.